Hello YouTube, I am Ashen Ninja and this is a getting started with a uh, quick head taker. So over the next episode or two or three, I'm not sure at this point admittedly, um, I'm going to be going through how to start off a Clan Moors quick head taker campaign. Um, cause I, apparently it's a very hard challenge, I wouldn't take, I'd take those with a grain of salt uh, for example, where do we have it? What scroll? He's apparently is normal. He's not normal. No one controls all. Uh, if we take Empire's blessings, anyone in Empire at the moment, never waver. Let us be three. Normal, Sigma, easy, Sigma's easy. Will. No, if you pay attention to the community, not easy. Uh, if you have a look at Imric, no rest. No, oh, that's Altharian. There you go, Emric. His apparently is hard. I would not say it's just hard. It's probably one of the hardest. Um, Altharian. Yeah, it can be easy or hard. Hmm. I, I think more, more hmm. easy first. Clan Moors triumphant. But yes, yes. we're going with Clan Moors. Quick head taker. It's supposedly very hard. Oh, I disagree, but it's a good opportunity. Now, as a faction and as a as what Lord affects Quick Quick has, he doesn't have the best ones. He steals XP from other lords, which sounds good on paper, but once he's level forty, that makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, he does not trust Gracie's at all. So the loyalty they start with, because there's a loyalty mechanic, of course, for uh, Skaven, uh, is minus two. There'll be more on loyalty as we get into the um, <coughs> start of this anyway. I'll just, I'll explain that then. Now, as a lord, you get uh, plus 10 melee attack when fighting against dwarves and greenskins. I'm, I'm not a big advocate of uh, Skaven melee. I prefer their ranged, so that's pretty useless. Therefore, the weapon strength also not overly useful. Upkeep for Storm Vermin and Clan Rat units is minus 50% for him, which is great at the start of the campaign. Not so useful later, but that's okay. And he gets more menace below uses, uh, which is good, uh, but it is only for him. If that was for his entire faction, I think it would be a lot better, but his faction effects are barely noticeable. He starts off with some Gutter Runner Slingers, which are quite a good unit. Uh, Storm Vermin Swords and Shields, which again, they're not a bad unit, and a Warp Lightning Cannon. Now, I'm playing this on Legendary with very hard battle difficulty. Um, everything I do in here uh, can essentially applies to uh, lower difficulties as well. So if you're playing on easy, normal, very hard, whatever you're doing, you know, this is similar. Uh, you'll probably get less uh, attacks and that sort of thing. Uh, on the lower difficulties, but that's okay. Um, in the end, the bulk of what I'll be saying is still useful. Um, we'll just have things like a uh, easier time of uh, keeping control of your provinces and that sort of thing. So the thing to always, always remember with Skaven, always, and this applies to every single Skaven uh, clan out there is always be ambushing. It is the biggest strength of the Skaven. Uh, in auto resolve, ambushing is um, probably weighted overly heavily most of the time. Um, so you can very much use it to your advantage. And being that you're Skaven, you should use every advantage to your advantage. Skaven are the ultimate of cheating, sneaky bastards, and that's how they should be. It, it's what they are. It it makes sense in the it's it on a law perspective. They're the sneakiest, backstabbiest bastards you've, you'll ever come across anywhere, and it's that's one of the reasons why I like them so much. I I, I really really enjoy the Skaven. I I um I, I got to tip my hat to um Creative Assembly. I think they've done an excellent job of uh, having the Skaven and the way they are. Uh, when I first started the loyalty mechanic, which they have, I thought was, uh, I was worried me a bit, but once you get used to it, it's not an issue. Now, 
just quickly we'll go through uh, at least the food mechanic. So Skaven have a little food mechanic here. The more food you have the better off you'll be so more growth as you're up here and less growth less money less public order less everything if your food's down there so food is a sh is a very very important part of the uh of the skaven now as clan moors you start off with karag orad and you want to get karakate peaks but don't prioritize it it's only a minus two public order penalty. It's no big deal. I mean, on legendary it should be because you, as you can see, where it says difficulty level there minus eight. Yeah, that's um, that's legendary for you. So Karakate Peaks is up here, and as you can see by the little green glowy triangle, that means there is an undercity here. It's our undercity. It's got a keep under keep, keep Warren. Yes, yes. Now problem with this is it's useless unless you're there so start off with demolishing it why demolish it this will provide you with 3,000 gold demolish it but at the same time you want food now you can get nice bit of passive food generation here and we put in the deeper tunnels as well so that uh, it's harder to discover us now you can do things like put in a vermintide or there's lots of different buildings you can build here generally a lot of them I don't really use a lot of them these ones are just for less discovery but they cost a lot of money or is that one it doesn't food generation food generation and money generation um, but again its discovery level is very high because depending on this red bar and that gray bar depends on how easily it will be discovered this is money generation but it will also take away some of your food and this is probably the other building I use which is uh, expanding it early on I don't use this one though I only go for these ones and I'll upgrade that one next turn as well once it's finished building now Mr. Queek I'm gonna send him over this way towards Granite Massive and while I'm over here I'm gonna quickly fix up our animation speeds you don't like going slow I don't like the enemy going slow I'm too impatient which is also one of the reasons why I'm not particularly good at legendary difficulty but that being said move ahead now it's important <coughs> in my opinion for Skaven to grow grow quickly because as a start you get Skaven Slaves which are shit and with this building in this case which is what we get with our clan moors this is a very good building food it's got growth it's got a decent amount of income recruitment uh, cost reduction for clan rats uh, income from all buildings uh, in and regions in the province so that plus 75 percent so for every single Skaven building you see it's got some kind of income generated so that just adds up to everything. So to start with, we want to go for a growth building. Now in here we've got an obsidian quarry that we could build. But as you can see, untainted plus one, obsidian and 80 income. So the income from it's actually not that much, unless, you've, unless you're going for uh, a lot of trade, which I, I generally don't. Now it might seem weird that I, so with this building that we do come with, we can recruit clan rats. So I don't need this pit, this this building at the moment. So until we're at level three, you can't build storm vermin anyway, and these are just clan rats. So don't need that building. This is a good building, but again, not a high priority. This building we want it because the bulk of our army is going to be made up of rattling guns, warp lock disables, poison wind mortars. But again, until we're a higher rank, we don't really need it. Over here. This is one we definitely want, Plague Claw Catapult. It's a tier 3 unit, but it stays in my armies no matter how long. It, it's, it's un they're, they're amazing, they're just awesome. And we want Warlock Engineers. We also do want this building. Again, Plague Cauldron does good things for Skaven Corruption, which does help our um, keep our uh, people in check. 
which is good. And as always, it inco has income. But it unlocks the uh, Plague Priest hero, which is actually all we really want from that building. That building, you can have Hell Pit Abominations and that if you want them. <coughs> Wouldn't worry about them though, personally. Uh, we've got walls. We have a nice building for finding uh, the Skaven. Another building that increases the amount of money all of our buildings make. Uh, a building for untainted and money. Don't worry about that one. Don't, don't worry about that. And a building for public order. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what I tend to do, say in the smaller settlements, is I build walls because walls income uh, generate income. Growth, again, it generates income. And the bell generates income. Those three buildings, probably the best for these smaller settlements. In my opinion, again. Other people will have other other opinions. Now, again, we'll recruit some clan rats just to bulk out our numbers for the early game. Nice low upkeep when it comes to um, Ikit. Ikit? No. Quick. Quick's good, but he's no Ikit. And off we go. That's our first turn. So we've basically re completely rearranged uh, what's up at Karakait Peaks. And we have got Ikit, Ikit, far out, Queek. Um, here's our first little bit of recruitment. And there we go. So with our income, all that, we can build our growth building up a bit more. So we're going to have lots and lots of growth. <coughs> Excuse me. And we want to put up our... Uh, scavenger building there so that will so we, even here you can already see it, we're gaining a decent amount of well, well a decent amount we're gaining some food as you can see so minus one for army upkeep minus one for settlement upkeep plus three for buildings we're about to ruin that by doing something crazy and recruiting another lord why am i doing this because I'm mad. No. Well. Yes. But. Uh, so what we know. We don't really want a Grace here. Uh, much as I do love a play Grace here. In. Uh, with those minuses. There's a chance that he'll rebel. I like the Assassin. Um, I've never really used them very much. Cunning is a good. Good trait to have. Uh, sneaky is better. But. If you have a look at here. This loyalty mechanic which can go up and down. As you can see, loyalty is a measure of the willingness of the Lord for the various factions that use it. And should it reach zero, they'll form their own faction. Uh, basically, a lot of the time keeping that up is winning battles, doing recruitment. And with him coming in at one to six, if he comes in at one, there's a chance that he might rebel straight away. We don't want that. Perceptive is okay. Weapon Master, a uh, bit of a waste on a Warlock. Warlord, that's not bad. It's extra speed. I like extra speed, but we're going to go for a Warlock Master, and we're going to go with a perceptive one. Once you get them on there, Warlock Master of Scrap. Three is okayish. Now, as we level up our Warlock Master, we're going to want something either the Doom Flare or the Doom Wheel. I go the Doom Wheel normally. Doomflayer is perfectly viable though, just because you want speed. <coughs> it's the, it's, it's, it all makes sense later when the armies are a bit more uh, coalesced and you know what's going on. Master now, Engineer. for Puston, I'm actually going to rename Puston. Like a we yeah. are going to rename Puston so that we know what he's for. going to rename him Bait. Because that is exactly what he will be. He will be bait. He is going to have some shitty units. Specifically, it's Game Slave Slingers. It will give us some more, give us some ranged power. Trophies, yes, yes. Now, for Queek, for turn two, die, die. Granite Massive. It's only got five units in it. There's no lords or anything like that. No armies. And 
our balance of power is well in our favour. Uh, you can see over here, normally you'd start with two of these, but because again, it's Queek, gets four. And he starts with Skaven Brew as well, which it's, it's a double edged sword, losing armour for extra attack. We're just going to auto resolve though. Nice decisive victory, we are not going to occupy it. We're just going to sack it, because it is going to be our punching bag for a bit. Now, we will leave Queek. Mm, let's move him a little bit further this way. Now, on lower difficulties, I wouldn't, you, I wouldn't really worry about it, but on this particular difficulty, we do tend to get an attack. Now, we picked up an Artifact Hunter, so that helps us get magic items, which will be good for the start. As his skill tree, so you can see he's got a special yellow line up here, uh, which I actually, I've, I've kind of gone two directions on it. I've ummed and hard about it. Um, has a bit of a loyalty penalty at first, but as you go through, you can grab Frenzy, which is a, it is quite a good uh, ability, as long as he's got decent leadership. Uh, again, you can then get up your Warlord recruit, but your uh, loyalty for your Grace Air recruit drops again. Uh, this one's really good, uh, not because of the extra bits for the Skaven Slave and Clan Rats, but because 10% replenishment is always awesome, and you can put 2 points in it to get 20%, and yeah, you can get upkeep for Clan Rats lowered, but meh. Uh, that one, I wouldn't bother with it, personally. I'm not going to be using Storm Vermin. This one's really, really good, though. More public order for all your provinces. Uh, extra, extra hero uh, success chance. Uh, it's actually really, really good, especially that extra, once you put, put two points in it, 25% ambush chance, which, again, you're ambushing all the time. But, to start, Route Marcher. I like to go blue, complete my blue line very much first. Now, one thing with Skaven is, when you do attack, uh, let's just go through the end turn quickly first, I'll discuss it then. We've got a, we can do that, that's because... That building gave us gave us that option. All right. So the reason why you say Skaven should be ambushing all the time, <coughs> excuse me, is really because when you attack, you ambush. So they have the ambush attack ability, which should not be underestimated ever by anyone because it is awesome. All right, because. Bates loyalty is low, we get some of these. So, Clan Scryer, those crazed, and Mania, Manic Rats, mix magic science together. Yep, yep. So, we can either just take minus one loyalty or we can take attrition. Again, he's bait. They can have attrition. Uh, we can get more attrition, which will give them another turn of attrition. Um, you know what? Let's, let's, let's get his. Uh, so that'll give him, what, two turns of attrition. We're not really going to be using him in combat at this stage anyway, so it's fine. Bring him over here. As you can see, we're going to have some uh, green skins appear soon. That's alright. We will give him some more slingers. And we will go to Grant Massive. And... Have another nice sacking city. Mm, delicious. Ooh, very nice for, especially for Queek. Oh, that's lovely. Ward save, if you're not sure. Ward save means that is 10% no damage. Literally takes, uh, means 10% less damage, essentially. Ward save means it's all resistances. Uh, melee defense plus five means he gets hit less, more armor, not a, never a bad thing. Now you see, I took away those because more clan rats for Queek first. More research, because that one only took one, one turn, so recruit rank for clan rats. This is all we can do at the moment, that's fine, but through here, casualty replenishment rate, 5%, very nice. 
most of this we're not really concerned about. Same with any of these, really. But where we want to get up to, and it will give anyone a hint, is up here. More ammunition for uh, weapons teams, and weapons teams, and up here it's for play claw catapults and that, all that sort of stuff. That's where we want to get to, because that's how we do our killing. Alright, quick, got another level, so ancient cunning for him. So as you can see, so when you, I go to attack the, the something like the, it's not going to work with him at the moment. So it turns into a sword, which means it's a normal attack. You can see here, it, no, it's still a sword. Okay, I thought it gave us a different icon. Well, basically, oh yeah, that's where the icon is. Down here. So you can see here, it's a different icon to what you'd normally get on your other lords, which is normally just like a line there. Chance of ambushing any enemy army this force attacks. That's the bet. That's, that's even strength right there. Alright, so we're good here now. We're good up there. Let's keep going. And I'm spilling my coffee everywhere. That's no good at all. So, basically we've got our start. Alright, that's good. Bait is loyal. And... Now, this may not happen depending on your level, but it actually still may, but we want to hit him, if we can, oh, we, no, we do have enough, oh, but we didn't get the ambush, that's a bummer, because that means we have not gotten a level this turn. That's okay. What we can still do is recruit more clan rats. Now, if he does attack us, uh, we can we can beat him anyway. But if he does attack us and we retreat for whatever reason, they won't get built, but the money will get refunded. And as you can see, because we've got our little joiny, come on, oh, where is it? Magic's and come on. I'll try you click on him. As you can see, when he attacks, we have our little reinforcement line, so we'll reinforce each other. He doesn't have the strength to take our Karak Orid in one turn, so that's not a problem. In three turns, we'll have enough to increase that. They'll get up full strength again. It's not really a problem though. Alright, so he's decided to that uh, discretion is the better part of Valor. We've gotten a breeder. So we'll head back this way. There is a chance that our friend will reappear uh, next turn, and that's fine if he does. And this time, because we've almost filled up him, we'll recruit them. Now, I know it doesn't, we're not making a lot of money, but we're going to make our money through fighting. More battles you fight, more money you get, etc. You can kind of supplement your income that way. If you're fighting almost every single turn, you'll still be making money. Uh, yeah, there we go, he's come back. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But let's ignore him this time around. What we'll do is we're gonna take we're gonna take bait over here, just outside the red line, which is the uh, demarcation point. Quick will jump in there. There we go. He's reinforcing, so he'll get experience. Quick, we'll do the destroying, really. Again, we are massively in favour, so... Move, move. Give that a sacking. And, ooh, that's really nice for bait to get. Ambush success chance and the scrying stone. The scrying stone doesn't really do too much. 
but it can help keep him alive when bad shit's happening. What, what? Uh, okay. Quick Run and bait, boys. head back over this way a bit. Think the side again. Now hopefully what will happen is he'll actually decide to, um, <coughs> excuse me, he might decide to uh, put Karak Orad under uh, siege next turn. Yes. Quick, we'll see what happens. More ancient cunning for Creek. Uh, for Creek? Huh. Well, he's going to be up shit, Creek, anyway. As the old saying goes. Alrighty. So we've, we've, we're off to a bit of a flyer, I think. Nothing too bad's happening so far. We haven't encountered anything too awful. He's going to come along and do that. If he is not in range of Queek this turn... We will demonstrate Bates' ability. Okay, his loyalty's gone back to being low again for some reason. Oh, it's only four, it's fine. Now, Queek can't, can't make it. He also can't make it. But he can go to about there. Go, oi, look at me, I'm weak ass. Look at my weak source. I'm so weak and tired, but there's a quake behind me. Not anymore! Oh yes, and we'll uh, upgrade that now. Because that's a good idea. Get that to level 3. Now, what we want to do, we've gotten that. We want replenishment. We don't really need that. Uh, we'll get all of this anyway, but... We're going to go for the upgrade, and let's see if Bait can live up to his name. <clears throat> can the right poor of Nordwell do what he's meant to do? It's the big question. Oh, ooh, ooh. No, didn't get, did not get the ambush, but for some reason still decided to attack. <coughs> and, but once more, look at our balance of power. So we'll just do it that way. This meat flesh will do it nicely. We're all the way up here for food, so we're good there. Another thousand gold into the kitty, so we're good there. Bait's gotten a level, that might help his loyalty as well. No, no need for this flesh. The question is... What do we take out of here? In this case, money, because 1% ain't going to do shit. Devour. And it only affects your main unit there. Let me guess. Yep, he's still raiding. That sucks. Not exactly what I want, because I want to be able to keep sacking over here, but... Them is Zebrecks. Now, one thing to also know about the AI in what these now? sorts of situations is it does well not study. learn. Ambush. Yes, yes. <clears throat> we set an ambush using bait last time and it's just gonna keep working because it's the way it works. What the fuck happened there? Did I miss? Did I not read something here? Oh yep, so we had a had an incident, which sucks because it means one less turn of that. Now, what we can do is, because he's down, down a bit in loyalty now, let's merge some units and set him to do some recruiting because that should help his uh, loyalty a little, maybe. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's see if we can get this old... Uh, this old green skin to come fall for our uh, our our bait this time. There we go again. For some reason, uh, despite foiling the ambush, they still attack. No idea why exactly. But balance of power is not quite as good as last time, but it is good enough. Not my Didn't no, lose anything no, important. 
again, this only affects the main army. Too many slaves to feed. And uh, so we will take more cash out of there. Greek has got an orc bane out of that as well. Now, you don't have to do auto, auto resolve. Obviously, I could do manual tap battles where I'd probably lose less. But because I'm trying to get through this a bit quickly, I'm not doing this optimally. Opt optimally? Yeah, something like that anyway. Now, we've got rid of those uh, green skin armies, so let's head back over here. Warlock of Skaven scum away. While we're here, we'll replace that clan rat we lost. Alright, Karak Orad, you can see yeah, it's dropping a fair bit there. Again, only literally only because of the difficulty level. If this was on normal, I don't think you've actually got a minus, for example. Uh, we'd be at zero, it'd be perfectly fine. But again, I'm not too concerned about that. Now, one thing I'm considering, so they don't have a lot of military presence down here. We can take Granite Massif and now use that as our sack city if we wanted to. And it is probably what I will do. I'll give him his level. Still an unused point. Good old bait. He's doing a good job there, sort of. But that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll continue along this route and we'll I'll kind of hopefully show you how to uh, make some more improvements with uh, Skaven. Uh, we'll take Granite Massive and I'll show you what, in my opinion, sh you should do uh, when taking it. Um, I've, I've found it to be the most efficient way of doing things here. So I shall see you in the next episode where we'll go a bit more advanced into Skaven. We're only nine turns in. We're not out of the woods yet. So I'll see you next time, next time, and uh, we'll go a bit more into our final army composition and taking uh, cities and stuff. Till then, hope you have a good one, and bye bye.